Hi guys, and welcome to today's video on the Hive uh, nodal logic system. This is hopefully the first of a series of videos and tutorials for the uh, the upcoming nodal logic uh, implementation, which we'll see in the Blender game engine in hopefully the not too distant future. Um, today's video is actually just describing how it works and hopefully getting you guys ready for it because it is something you have to prepare yourselves for. So you might be asking why. Uh, you need to know anything about it, it's just an nodal logic system. And that is true. When you look at it in a graphical user interface, you don't see much different to any other nodal logic system. You have a series of nodes, different coloured nodes, and actually quite a pretty graphical user interface in terms of the external one. Now, hopefully we want to integrate this into Blender using the existing Blender nodes once they are sort of freed from their existing hard-coded source by another Google Summer of Code project. So on Stuart's behalf, I will hopefully help you guys with Getting, getting used to the, the sort of the mindset around this. So, when we look at a typical nodal logic system, we see something hopefully like this. If I just change the size down to five or something, oh no, that's five hundred. Right. So, when you think of a nodal logic system, you think you have a box, let's say, and uh, that box has a little input pin. It's you know the downside is I'm working on working on multiple monitors and that isn't helping me. Uh, let me just try unplugging one and seeing what happens. Let's pause this video. Okay, hopefully that works. Uh, and this is very odd. Let's my solution. And then, so there's our little input pin we have there. Here's an output pin. I think this is unusual now. Input, output, and here's a little sort of drag handle if you like. And then we'll have another box, another node. I don't. A bit of perfection, as you'll see. And we'll have another sort of output pin. Let's say this is a variable pin, variable node. And then we go into our little box. Again, terrible. And likewise, we have another node here. A little input pin. And this could just be an input. This could be a multiplier or an adding. It adds plus one. And then we'll get, let's say this is in a value of one here, we get an output of two. This is how you think a nodal logic system works. And this is, yes, in terms of the graphical user interface, this is how the system works. Unfortunately, conceptually, this is not how Hive works. Although I hope that you'll argue in my favour later on when I say this is actually a good thing. Um, so why would this be? Why would this be a good thing? Well, crudely, Hive gives you some interesting. I was going to scribble this halfway. Gives you some interesting feature dynamics that we can do. So if we look at the system now from a different light and under the Hive branding. Again, this should not be this big. And nor should it be 500. Now, how does Hive differ? Firstly, we need to define everything. So this here, this wire, is going that way. Thus, this is a an, an antenna. And if you think about antenna as they are on bees and other um, little insects. They give them the ability to see, and they carry data. In this case, it's carrying data from A to B. If this is A, this is B. They go in that direction. So you'd think you'd be right in thinking, perhaps, that this is an antenna too. No, this is not an antenna. This is an output. Um, we describe. We don't describe um, really the wires. Instead, we're describing these pins here. This is the output pin and this is the input pin. So this is the antenna and this is the output. The wire is just the 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 Python interpreter sending it from here to here through a function call, perhaps. So there isn't actually a physical wire. Um, so what's next? Well, what is this thing then? These boxes, what are they? You could call them nodes. And yes, we tend to call them nodes, but in Hive, these aren't nodes. These are workers. Now there are two kinds of nodes that, Pyth uh, that Hive deals with. There's workers and there are drones. Drones, for starters, you cannot see in the GUI. So if we write this down, they're not in the GUI. Uh, but they are in the code base. So when you're writing your own, they are they exist. So how does this help us? Well, firstly, let's look at workers alone. Workers have a few common attributes. If we, um, where's my legs gone? Um, I think it's on my other window, so I need to find it. It's in code slot, uh, no. So 
around here somewhere. I'll have to find double locks layers. Oh, it's, it's over here. That's unfortunate. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. Um, if I make a new document, do the same thing. Um, here is our node. And if I get a new color, and let's say we'll make it blue. And let's make all the values inside it. Here is an input pin. Here is an output pin. Here is a title. Perhaps. And here is... Uh, what else we have? Here's a triangle. <laughs> so, here's our input pin. This is called the antenna. You've already seen it. And this is called the output. You've also seen this. So what's this big box? This box describes a function. So we don't call it a node, although when we do refer to nodes, we are referring to this function box. And we think of this function box as simply being um, a uh, a node or a fun. It, it, this function box, everything within this function box, is designed to perform the function of this node. Now you can't see a box unless there is a worker involved. So there is definitely one worker here. Um, and it's important to note that um, a worker can also interface with a drone. Uh, the problem is you can't see a drone. So this, what is a drone? Think of a drone as a uh, a higher authority. So if I make a little box out of uh, orange here, and make we'll make him a small square. And this little box is a clever drone. This this box can do maths because I'm British. So, when we want to do anything, let's say add, this is called add. We call the drone to do something with this. Let's say it's going to, it's going to know it's clever, so it'll, it'll just add them automatically. And then, we send this data that we get back from it to the output. Now, you don't see this happening. You only see this. And this is actually what happens. Uh, it goes from the antenna to the worker to the output. But the way in which it does this is it calls this drone up here. So if you're if you're Python literate at all, a drone is essentially a class or a, which all things are in, in Hive, but it's a class which enables you to access its methods. So why do we want to use drones at all? Well if you look on my FAQs, you'll see that um, I've written something down here. Um, two things. Firstly they are a separation layer. And secondly they are only instantiation. You can only call them once. So if you make multiple math drones with the same plugin, with the same function names, you can only call one of those functions, um, which becomes in a very handy. It means you can't create more than one drone accidentally. So if you're Python literate at all, this is a class, and this class has functions. So we'll have add, and we'll have subtract, and call it sub. Now, how do we access these? Well, we can't access this drone because uh, whilst we're running the system, because this drone is just a way of calling these to exist. Instead, we have to access these methods directly, and we do that whilst because let's just make a note that these methods can access this, the drone, but we can't access the drone without accessing the methods. So, how do we access the methods if we can't access the drone? We access them using something called a plugin system. Now the plugin system and the socket system, which is a plugin and a socket, work in the very same way as antennas and outputs do. So let's get on to quickly onto a new diagram so you don't get too confused. And if I can just can I draw on this? Um, that's horrible. Um, let's just make it white for now. For some reason I can't do it. There we go. Okay. Let's make ourselves red. So what we do is we have the following. We have antennas, or AN, perhaps NT, antenna, I'll do the whole thing. We have outputs, we have sockets, which are the same as outputs, but for, for drones, plugins, and all kind of the same. And we have plugins. So how do these all relate? We have something called a B. These all derive from B. A bit like they all share the same genetics as B, although they've evolved separately. And this is for input. This is for output. This is actually also for output. And this is for input. 
So, we need to think about these separately, and also <laughs> together. Here is our worker, and here is our drone methods. So how are these important? How do these help us at all? Well, basically, because everything is separated, it enables us to work more effectively. So I'm, I'm going to try and make a new document this time without having a white and blue background colour, because it's infuriating. Okay, let's go. So, we know now our drones are separate to workers. Workers can call drones, but only their methods. So how do we expose their methods? Well, we use these plugins and sockets. And to make these plugins available, we do something called a... Um, we call in the plugin and socket um, classes. So I'm going to cover these more in another tutorial. Um, I'm just going to stop this video now to save the space and upload it quicker. Thank you for watching, and uh, part two coming up soon, hopefully.